How much do you feel you need to have saved up in order to retire with confidence? New survey suggests a alarming number. I've got that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. How much do you think you need to have saved up in order to retire with confidence? What's your expectation? If you were walking down the street and someone, someone with a microphone walked up, asked you the survey, hey, how much do you need or how much do you think Americans need in order to retire, how much would you say? Well, that's exactly what happened. Came in at a lar an alarming number. I'm going to share that in just a second, as well as a better approach to take. But oftentimes, when you're talking about your retirement goal, many people start with, well, my retirement goal is I want to be done at this age. They'll start with, with an age. So I want to be done at 62 or 63 and a half or 65 or 67, something like that. And then if they've thought about it more or maybe done a little of the math as opposed to true planning, or maybe they've met with an investment salesperson who said they did planning, they might then tell you a number as well. I wanna have this much saved up. Um, if both of those guys are inadequate and they could, the big concern is they could lead you to making the wrong conclusion about when to retire. And this is something you don't wanna mess up, right? Everyone just wants to retire once. You don't, you don't wanna find out that you made a terrible choice and find out in your late 70s or early 80s, oh my goodness, because there's no do-overs. And at that point, it's not possible to go back and re-enter the workforce for many people. So it's more than just that, I'll get to it. But recent survey about asking Americans, how much do you feel you need to have saved up in order to retire? For 2022, that number is now $1.25 million. On average, people expect that they need to have $1.25 million saved up. Is that, does that surprise you? Is that in line with what you're shooting for or your ex expectations? Just a year ago, this same survey said just over a million. That's a huge jump of 20%. Now I can get the feeling, right? You might, your investments are down 20%, you know, your bonds are down. If you're, if you're approaching retirement and this was, you know, and you were surveyed, you might feel like you need to have more saved up because the market's so volatile and your investments are down, uh, stock market and bond markets are down. Um, but, uh, and you also might feel like it needs to be a bigger number because listen, life is more expensive due to inflation. And let's be honest, whatever CPI tells us, you know, it costs about 10, 12% more to live your normal life than it did just a, just a year or so ago. And you add two years of that together, it's, it, life's more expensive. So yeah, I think that that's justified. However, what do you think? What's your goal? How much do you feel that you need saved up? Along with that, I also mentioned, yeah, most people just at a rudimentary basic basis level, they are asked, okay, what's your retirement goal? They typically start with an age. That was part of the survey as well. A year ago, people expected to be able to retire at 62 in six months. That was surprising to me. That seemed very low. Right now, they've increased that to 64. Those are the new expectations. Hope to retire at age 64. I think that's probably closer to reality or what most people should be shooting for. At the same time, you look at all the surveys going back through history, people typically retire a little bit before they had planned. Health issue came up, a work surprise came up, an, account, an economic reason, something like that. People tend to retire earlier than what they're shooting for, meaning you need to get even more prepared. But is shooting for a number how much I have saved up, or shooting for an age, are those the right targets or is there more to it? Guys, there is more to it. It's, it's yes, both of those things, how much do you save, have saved up, when do you wanna be done, but it's more than just that. Let me give you an example. Very, very early in my career, individual um, had done the math, very smart, and said, um, well, when I reach a million dollars, when I saved up, uh, have a million dollars saved up in my 401k, I'm gonna be able to retire. Well, here's the thing. He achieved that feat at age 54. And guess what? At age 54, he, and the reason was, well, I should be able to withdraw 5% of my portfolio and I can live on that each year, uh, you know, uh, or, or I think it was five grand a month. I can, I can draw five grand a month out of that million bucks and it'll be fine and I can live on that. So here's, here's the reality. If you are going to retire at age 65, with a million bucks, that 65, that million dollars needs to last you 20 to 25 years. But if you retire at 54, 
that doesn't influence your life expectancy. You're at, like, actually, some people say, well, the earlier you retire, the longer you're going to live because you have less stress and all that. I don't know if that's, if that's proven. But at age 54, that money needs to now last another 11 years. Guys, that's a long time. The analogy is a terrible analogy, but what's, what's more expensive? Going to Disney for a weekend, going, for Disney, going to Disney for a week, or going to Disney for a month? The longer you stay, the more expensive it's, it is. So the longer your retirement is, the more you need to have saved up. And sure enough, j j just to, this is a real story. So, so against our advice, this individual retired, said he would be able to spend five grand a month in reality, so 60 grand a year. When we averaged it out over the first three years, it was spending closer to 90 grand. Right, so it didn't work, obviously, and so there's a lot, there's a lot at stake. Contrast that, contrast that with another friend. We've been serving for about five years, and before we built out his five-factor retirement plan, which is what I would recommend to you, that's more important than just latching onto a number or latching onto an age. Both of those are variables; those are part of the factors, but you've got to have a full five-factor retirement plan. So contrast that. Well, when I need a million, or when I have a million saved up, I'll be able to retire. Contrast that to to this other example. A friend of mine, we've been serving for about five years. By the time he came in, uh, kids were just about out of college, mortgage was paid off, and retirement was really in focus. And, and he wanted to retire um, right about now, okay? So, uh, so about five years later, at age 65, he wanted to have $3 million saved up by then. And the reason was they currently spend 10 grand a month. And he felt that, and he knew, he's a very conservative investor, and so that's, we've talked about that before, not, you know, if you have identity crisis with your investing, that can get you in trouble. Thinking, well, uh, I can take this much risk when reality, once that roller coaster ride hits, you, you jump off uh, the roller coaster, right? So he knew, I'm a very conservative investor. I'm not gonna take a lot of risk. I should be able to get 2.75% interest. That plus my social security at age 65, my spouse's social security at age 65, that should give us the 10 grand a month. Love it, love it, that's close. That's not, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll share with you where we're able to improve that, that plan, but that's much more detailed, much more thought through, and that covers almost all of those five factors. So here's the thing, guys. In order to retire with confidence, it's not just a number. So 1.25 million, I have no idea if that's the right number for you, if that's the number you should focus on or not. 64, no idea. It depends. It depends on five factors that are all interrelated, as I've already shared. The first is age. When do you wanna be done? And if you're not able to reach that goal, what age are, how long are you willing to work before you say, hey, no, I'm gonna need to be done at this, to this point. Okay, so age, that, that also um, comes with life expectancy, right? So how long will retirement last? That's the first, that's the first um, uh, factor. The second is spending level. And this is my, my, the second example, my friend who's retiring about right now, this is where he made some gaps, okay? He said, well, we spend 10 grand a month right now. Okay, great. He wasn't factoring in inflation. He wasn't factoring in healthcare, right? Spending while you're working, health insurance typically for most people gets taken out right out of your paycheck and then you live on what's left. Well, in retirement, your your social or excuse me, your your health insurance uh, you've got to cover that like in it, like a monthly expense as opposed to, you know, separate when it just comes out of your paycheck. So he wasn't including that in there. Also wasn't including taxes in there as well. Again, while you're working, that just hopefully you've got the right withholdings. That's just automatically coming out of your paycheck. He wasn't factoring that in. So it was really 10 grand a month plus health insurance plus taxes. Um, and then he wasn't applying inflation to this as well, which is the big challenge, especially if you're an income, if you're a low risk investor. And so we had to build that out a little bit more, but that second factor is spending. Third factor is income, income sources, right? How do you optimize your social security? Do you have any other, so, any other sources of income uh, in retirement? So that's the third. Fourth, now we get to how much do you have saved up? What's your total investment nest egg or, or, or portfolio? So how much do you have saved up and how much are you saving between now and retirement? And then the last one, again, my friend hit this one, nailed it right on the head, and that is how much risk are you comfortable taking with those investments? If you're comfortable taking a lot of risk and you can stomach those ups and downs, then long-term you should have a bigger, a higher future expected return. If you're not willing or you're not able to stomach those big ups and downs, then a low risk and low potential return is, 
is what you should assume. Most of us should assume something balanced, something between those two. So your retirement is really dependent upon how those five factors, how those five decisions interrelate to each other. So if you choose, now I need to be done at 54, then how much you have saved up is likely gonna increase. How much you're able to spend will likely go down right? Um, how much risk you take with your investments probably needs to go up and, and that means more risk to your, to your plan. Conversely, if you say, well, I'm willing, I, I can work until age 67, that's going to influence those other factors. So guys, it's more than, even though these surveys are very interesting and it gives you sort of the pulse of what other people are thinking, don't. Don't make the mistake of just shooting for a number. A lot of investment advisors that say they do financial planning, We'll, we'll ask you about an age and they'll, they'll calculate, here's how much you need to have saved up. Guys, it's a fallacy. It's more than that. That can lead you to make some huge mistakes in your financial decisions and, and in your financial life. So work with a certified financial planner who's doing comprehensive financial planning. They'll walk through those five factors with you, work through the trade-offs to help you know what you need to be doing to stay on track or get on track. And when the market has turmoil or when changes happen in your life, they will recalibrate and update and adjust those, those, uh, those factors to help you, again, stay on track or know what you need to do to get on track. Work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.